Sports at 12. The Night Beat starts right now. As we turn the calendar to July, one conversation still on the top of many minds. That, of course, gun violence. Yesterday marking the last day of Gun Violence Awareness Month. But to one Bear County coalition, it is only the start to pushing for more gun safety. Our night team's Avery Everett is breaking down gun violence data tonight that we've collected over the past month and what this means moving forward for safety in San Antonio. We as citizens want to have a change. It's no secret that San Antonio has seen a violent month. It's very scary. KSAT has covered more than 100 crime calls in June alone, and dozens of those calls involve guns. The Bear County Gun Safety Coalition says it's concerned. It is getting really bad here and in other cities. So we have we have an epidemic. I think people are scared to uh, go to the mall with their kids. Coalition members say in what was supposed to be a month creating change, that they've seen too much crime, leaving them with more questions than answers. What can we do in the commission's court and what can the cities do to reduce gun violence? This map shows those shootings KSAT has covered since the start of June. City officials often want to focus on communities with heavy crime, but our data shows Bear County is a hot spot for crime. It hasn't really been addressed in a way where we can really make a difference. With the calendar changing, this coalition is calling out. We don't want, um, you know, just words. We want our uh, lawmakers to actually take action through legislation. Gun Violence Awareness Month may be over, but this coalition says the conversation on gun safety has only begun. That bipartisan coalition is hosting a town hall to address their concerns with community leaders in the next two weeks. I also emailed the spokesperson for Metro Health about their stand up SA crime prevention program. They recommended their program staff would not do any interviews right now because of safety measures. For now, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery, for that report. In Cibolo, several suspects are on the run after an attempted overnight car burglary and shooting. Yeah, it happened just after midnight when a man says he tried to stop a suspect from breaking into his car in the 100 block of Spring Willow. Police say that's when the suspect got into a silver four-door car that was waiting for him and then sped off. The man chased that car down the street, which he said then picked up more people along the way and was eventually shot at when he caught up to the car. Thankfully, nobody was hurt in the shooting, but a nearby home was struck. Right now, there's no suspect information, but if you know anything about this incident, call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers hotline. That number is on your screen, 877-403-8477. And a 13-year-old Bear County girl hasn't been seen in more than a day, and deputies need your help to find her. This is Julissa Barron. Deputies say the girl disappeared Friday night just before 9 and was last seen in the 900 block of Cozumel Emerald in the city's far west side. She was wearing a white top, white pants and black Crocs when she was last seen and suffers from conditions that require medical attention. If you know where she is or have any information, call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. A man recovering tonight from several gunshot wounds in San Antonio police are looking for the suspects they say are responsible and two girls that were with the victim. According to police, a 40 year old man was taking two girls he had just met to a gas station on Palo Alto back on June 13th. And after making a purchase inside the gas station, two men approached the victim and tried to rob him. The two men then got into an altercation with the victim. Then one of the suspects shot the victim four times. The two girls and two suspects ran from the scene and have not been caught yet. Anybody with information on the incident has to call Crime Stoppers. And a driver is on the run after San Antonio police say they hit a woman crossing the road and didn't stop to help. It happened Friday night in the 500 block of North WW White Road. Police say the 19 year old was walking across the street when a white Toyota sedan hit her. The driver kept going and left her on the street. She was taken to the hospital for her injuries. Police say when they find the driver, they will be charged with failure to stop and render aid. A San Antonio man will spend the rest of his life in prison for the continuous sexual assault of a child. The Bear County DA's office says Wesley Henderson seen here abused that victim for more than four years before telling a family member. Henderson's 99 year sentence decided after the jury heard testimony from the victim and another person that was abused. Henderson is not eligible for parole and still has pending indecency with the child charges. And we now know the name of the man who died earlier this week trying to unload slabs of marble from a truck. 
Police say 45-year-old King Shang Soon died of blunt force injuries while he was unloading sheets of marble that became loose and fell on him. It happened at a business near West Avenue in Acoma Drive Wednesday. Workers heard a loud noise and ran to check on him and called police when they saw what happened. Soon was pronounced dead at the scene, and OSHA is still investigating the death. Shifting gears, take a look at this. Uh, during the holiday weekend, this was the scene at Historic Market Square for their 4th of July celebration this morning. The free event welcoming the public in to listen to music and taste the food that makes San Antonio so unique. And if you missed your chance today, don't worry. Market Square is doing it all over again tomorrow starting at 10, and it will last until 6 Sunday evening. Yeah, and it wasn't too bad out there earlier this morning. We had the cloud cover helping temperatures out just a little bit throughout the first half of the day. But then this afternoon, as expected, more peaks of sunshine and those temperatures were able to crank up. We actually topped out at 100 degrees earlier this afternoon. But for some folks late this afternoon and this evening, we've been seeing some rain cooled air. Let's get you a quick check at the radar here in San Antonio. You see that narrow band of green that's pushing through downtown. That's actually an outflow boundary, so the leading edge of some rain cooled air sparking up a few isolated showers here in Bear County, one near Leon Valley that's approaching 1604 near Holotus and UTSA, and another shower that's fizzled out west of 281 near the Timberwood Park area. But that's not all we're monitoring. Non severe, but still some noisy storms, mainly along and west of the I 35 corridor, approaching places like Hondo, Sabinal, even the Uvalde area that does stretch farther down to the southwest as well, just east of places like Crystal City and Carrizo Springs. So we'll talk more about these storms, get you a full detailed look at the radar, plus what we can expect heading into the back half of the weekend and your 4th of July coming up in just a few guys. All right, man, we'll see you then. A San Antonio nonprofit hopes to empower, inspire and encourage women and young girls. The night team's Camelia Juarez with how their program has already changed the life of a local teen by building up her confidence. I feel like you as yourself should be the first priority and especially your self care and self love. 13 year old Anita Jihad learned this through a 10 week class called Beautiful You. Like that's like the key to life. The group behind this course is Monster Moms because I was doing some of those things already. Tia Gibson is the founder of the nonprofit and says they focus on teaching women and young girls what makes them special and they have conversations about different issues. We start off talking about like basically um, how you love yourself, what is self love, how do you identify as who you are, right? And then we talk about trauma and how does it feel to be sad and what does it mean to have a trigger? Gibson says the nonprofit was established in 2018 and has been helping many people in our community. Monster Moms also offers parenting and life skill courses and provides women's hygiene essentials. Not for nobody else, but for myself. Because For Anita, she welcomes others to join the program. Start doing things that make yourself happy and that empower yourself and don't listen to what nobody else has to say. Gibson hopes to partner with other organizations to spread their message and help out other people. Camelia Juarez, Kisa 12 News. Still to come on the night beat, restaurants getting revisited by inspectors after racking up several health code violations in recent weeks. See what they found behind the kitchen door. Plus, cracking down on a different crime, illegal dumping. Cleanup crews picking up nearly 2,500 tons of illegally dumped trash and waste last year. What new tactic they're using to catch the criminals behind it all. And wild weather could ruin thousands of holiday weekends. Coming up, what kind of threats are putting a damper on 4th of July weekends across America? As people across the country celebrate 4th of July weekend, severe weather is putting a potential strain on some of those celebrations. Between damaging storm threats in the Midwest and East and dangerous heat across the southern and western states, more than 110 million Americans could be affected. ABC's Rena Roy shows us how the weather is putting a damper on travel. A third of Americans on alert for dangerous weather this holiday weekend. Four tornadoes reported in Colorado in Estes Park, northwest of Denver, a winter-like scene. Hail covering the road, forcing drivers to take it slow. Further east in Sherman County, Kansas, severe winds near zero visibility and significant rainfall. Multiple accidents were reported. Across the south, New Orleans, one of many spots sweltering under a blanket of intense dangerous heat. Temperatures from Texas to Georgia swelling to 
triple digits. The entire state of Mississippi under an excessive heat warning. The severe weather impacting travel over the weekend. The TSA expecting more than 17 million people to fly, breaking a record. Officials say they screened 2.8 million passengers on Friday. Check your flights ahead of time, way ahead of time. We were at the airport for nine hours. We got here early and we expected exactly what we're seeing. This following a week with more than 7,000 cancellations and delays across the country, some passengers sleeping at airports. We were told to go to customer service. There's a seven hour wait in the customer service line. People had been standing there for days. And a record number of people hitting the roads. AAA is expecting more than 43 million Americans to drive to their destinations this weekend, up 2.4 percent from last year and 4 percent from before the pandemic. The best time to hit the road is before noon. Experts say the worst time to drive is after 1 p.m. But there is some good news. AAA says gas prices are down compared to last year. The national average is 353 for a gallon of regular unleaded. One year ago, it was 484 a gallon, a bright spot after months of higher gas prices. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. I got back home late Sunday night just before all the craziness hit, so I'm <laughs> thankful I got home before all the madness. Right, and just driving into work today, I saw that traffic pick up, and we are seeing now with weather is changing as well. That is true, yes, especially across our southwestern counties, really along and west of I-35 tonight. If you're out for any holiday weekend plans, you will want to be careful out there on the roadways because we do have a couple of non-severe but noisy things thunderstorms moving through that also have some pockets of heavy rain associated with them. So here's the big picture right off the bat. If you were really east of I-35, you're not really seeing anything out there in terms of rain and storm activity, but I do want to give you a little detailed tour across South Central Texas of what we're currently seeing out there on the radar right now. This is one of the stronger again, non severe thunderstorms that we have in place really east of Carrizo Spring northeast of 83 there near Big Wells in far northeastern Dimmick County. This storm was capable of producing some nickel sized hail mainly south of 85 right there as well as some wind gusts upwards of about 40 to 50 miles per hour. You'll notice overall the motion and trajectory of these storms. They're pretty slow moving, which means heavy rainfall is going to be one of the biggest things that we'll need to keep eyes on for those that are traveling to and from Saturday night plans south of high Highway 90 approaching slowly the Hondo Castroville area. We've got another strong noisy storm out that way that continues into far northeastern Zavala County as well. And here in San Antonio and Bear County haven't seen any scattered or widespread activity. Just a few isolated pop up showers that have been able to develop one right now on the northwest side near the Med Center. Also along 410 near Holmes High School there too. We'll also been monitoring a couple of isolated showers north of 1604 near Timberwood Park. Some of that activity continues across portions of the hill country just north of Lakey, and then you'll see way out in Valverde County. Another cluster of rain is coming together. Now we were talking about those rain totals, how we will need to monitor for some heavy rainfall throughout the rest of the night where you're seeing the colors here again, mainly along and west of I 35. That's where we've got a little bit more of those hefty rainfall totals, especially with that storm we were talking about in northeastern Dimmick County. Radar is estimating anywhere between two to four inches have already fallen near and west of Big Wells. A little pocket of two and a half inches possible south of 90 there in Medina County, south of Hondo, and then some additional totals closer to about one to even two inches of rain south of Canipa, Uvalde, even stretching over into northeastern Zavala County. So we'll continue to keep eyes on that. All of this is non severe. I think over the next several hours we will start to see that die down. But the farther west that you go, especially with that second batch that's getting going in northern Valverde County, we may need to monitor that to see if it can work its way into portions of the hill country there as well. Temperatures right now, you can see where we have that rain cold air 70s for places like Rock Springs and Kerrville 82 right now here in San Antonio. This follows what was a hot start to the month of July. 100 degrees was the high temperature here in San Antonio. Looking ahead though, that heat high that we've been talking about over the past several days, that's moved out of here. It has shifted east, which means as we head
head into the back half of the weekend and really next week. Yeah, it's still going to be hot, but not as hot. We also will see some small rain chances that will continue throughout the forecast. So here's a quick look at your Sunday mid to upper 70s expected with some morning cloud cover. I think by lunchtime we'll be nearing the upper 80s, closing in on that 90 degree mark. And then as we head into the afternoon hours, those temperatures once again looking to top off in the upper 90s. And we also will keep about a 10 to 20 percent chance for a couple of stray showers to develop before the day is done. And you can see that trend is really going to continue each and every day all the way through next week. Don't cancel your 4th of July plans by any means because it's not going to be for everybody. And really coverage is expected to be limited at least throughout the first half of the week. Just know that we'll continue to keep eyes on the radar. And of course, we'll keep you posted on air online and on your KSAT Weather Authority app, guys. I have a feeling people are going to continue to gravitate towards the water, the pool, the yes. beach, and it's just perfect for that. Thanks, Mia. Mm -hmm. The Weather Department Computer won getting a break this week. <laughs> no 100. All right, uh, RJ, the Spurs won the NBA draft mm -hmm. uh, lottery. Are they going to play the sweepstakes? Yeah, let's see how that's going because, guys, Wemby Mania, of course, took hold of the city, but a lot of free agency moves need to be done here. Free agency has started, and the Spurs are getting to work on and off the court, but do any of those plans include this guy right here, Damian Lillard, what the All-Star said about the Spurs after requesting a trade today. And the Rangers look to even the score against the Astros today. Highlights from the Lone Star Series up the road there in Arlington. Sports will be right back. That's my motivation. Um, I did go out to eat last night. I mean, it was my birthday, so it was kind of like a <laughs> give and go. Um, but that's about it. It's motivation. This will be a birthday for the memory books for sure. Spurs for Julian Champagne has a lot to celebrate now that he's 22 years old. More on that in just a minute. The Spurs have been busy with NBA free agency underway, bringing back some players that made an impression last season, including this guy right here, Trey Jones, who is entering his fourth year in the league. ESPN reported that Jones agreed to return to San Antonio on a two-year deal worth $20 million. That's not bad for the former second-round pick out of Duke. Jones played in 68 games last season and started 62 of them at point guard. He averaged a career-high 12.9 points per game and led the Spurs with 6.6 .6 assists and 1.3 steals per game. Jones was a restricted free agent heading into this offseason. And San Antonio is also bringing back a big man who quickly became a fan favorite. ESPN reporting that center, Sandro Mamu Keskavili, more affectionately known as Mamu to all the fans, has agreed to a one-year deal worth $2 million with the Spurs. Mamu averaged 10.8 points per game and nearly seven rebounds in 19 games with the Spurs last season. But the biggest order of business today for the Spurs was getting this guy right here, the number one overall draft pick, Victor Wembanyama, to put the pen to the paper and sign his rookie contract. The Spurs and Wemby took care of that this morning with Victor officially signing at the team offices. The Spurs shared a video on social media of Wembanyama signing his first contract, hopefully the first of many, with the silver and black. Spurs general manager Brian Wright was with Wemby to seal the deal. The Spurs did not share any more details about the contract, though. Wembanyama played professionally in France since he was just 15 years old. Last season, the 19-year-old led his French club to the teams to the French League Finals before declaring for the NBA draft. He was the consensus, consensus number one prospect and is now a San Antonio Spur. And now that the Spurs got all the off-the-court stuff out of the way, it was good to see Wembanyama on the court for Summer League training camp, which started this week. So it's been a whirlwind week for Victor, but he looked happy to be back to just playing basketball and getting to know some of his new teammates. The Spurs Summer League roster is filled with rookies and second-year players like Malachi Branham and Blake Wesley, but one intriguing player is Julian Champagne. The 6'8 four just signed a new four-year deal with the Spurs worth $12 million. This came a day after he celebrated his 22nd birthday on Thursday. Not a bad week for Champagne, who impressed the coaches late last season. He was asked this week if playing for Coach Pop has been everything he expected. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yes and no. Yes and no. Um, I know I kind of, as, as I continue to be around Coach, and I, I think I'll get to see more sides of him. Um, but I definitely got a good glimpse of Coach last year, and I like it. I love it, actually. I mean, I think I fit in with what he wants to do, and I like how he coaches. 
So we'll get to see Julian in action along with the rest of the Spurs Summer League players starting Monday at the California Classic in Sacramento. The, Sp the Summer Spurs play Charlotte and then take on the Lakers on July 5th and KSAT Sports will be there covering all the action. Look for live reports starting tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. The Spurs also announced earlier this week that Victor Wimbanyama would join the team when they head to Las Vegas Summer League. All right, speaking of potential future Spurs, just throwing this out there, how would Damian Lillard look in silver and black? Well, Portland's all-star guard is asking out of the Pacific Northwest and wants to be officially traded. The three teams that are front runners to get Lillard are Miami, the LA Clippers, and Philadelphia, but ESPN reported that Dame is also a, has a deep respect for the Spurs organization, and San Antonio could be a wild card in all this. Lillard was on the latest U.S. Olympics gold medal winning team that was coached by Greg Popovich. Lillard has played his entire 11-year NBA career for the Portland Trailblazers. He's been named an NBA All-Star seven times and is Portland's all-time leading score. All right, now to the Diamond Astros at the Rangers this afternoon. Houston started off the series yesterday with the win, but Astros starting pitcher Hunter Brown was not having a great day against the Rangers batters today. Third inning, Corey Seager reaches on an infield signal. That brings in Leody Tavares from third, and it's 1-0 Rangers. Next inning, Travis Jankowski singles to left. Bringing in Jonah Heim, scores from third. That's 2-0 Rangers there. And two batters later, it's Marcus Simeon with a shot to left. That brings in Jankowski. Yeah, Brown would give up 10 hits in four innings pitch. Seventh inning now, San Antonio and MLB All-Star Josh Young, who was 0-3 at this point, delivers with a runner. Thanks to this deep double to left field, Rangers go up 4-0. Rangers get 15 hits and win 5-2. The four-game series continues tomorrow. Sunday's game is slated for 1-3. 35 p.m. All right, coming up at 1030. How would SAFC do without Jordan Farr at goalie tonight? It's game day for San Antonio FC. The Gunslingers and the Missions will have those highlights for you coming up later on tonight. Rangers looking good. Their alternate uniforms. Not I good. like the look. Yeah, definitely. I do not like that. <laughs> looking good terrible. and playing good. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> All right, still to come on the night. Beat. Massive civil unrest in France following the death of a 17 year old boy at the hands of police straight ahead where the nation stands as it braces for its fifth night of protests in a row. And rate limit exceeded. If you use Twitter today, odds are that's the message you got when you open the app. What it means? Why thousands are complaining about it. Welcome back. Health inspectors had to revisit several local restaurants that racked up numerous health code violations last month. Here's what they found behind the kitchen door. Angie's Cafe, located in the 1200 block of Pleasanton Road, got a low score of 73. The inspector saw at least five small roaches in the signage above a sink. Containers of diced potatoes and sanitizing solution were sitting on the floor. Uncovered raw beef was on top of a pan holding cooked food. Other foods were found sitting out at room temperature while foods in a cooler were too warm. A thorough cleaning was needed to remove a heavy residue of dust and grease. A reinspection was ordered. El Siete Mares got a 79, the same score they had nearly a year ago when they were featured on BKD. The inspector told them not to leave tartar sauce out at room temp. They also needed to remove the cans of Raid in the kitchen. Knives and other utensils were being stored in between equipment and on walls that were dirty. Water from fans in a walk-in cooler was dripping into a container of raw fish. They were told to make corrections by their next routine inspection. Ray Ray's Tex-Mex at 346 East Mitchell earned an 80 and a reinspection. The ice machine needed to be cleaned to remove black buildup. The gasket seals on a refrigeration unit also had a black buildup and needed to be replaced. An employee was wearing torn gloves and rinsing them in highly concentrated bleach water. Several items needed to be thoroughly cleaned to remove grease and residue. They were given 10 days to make corrections. Dairy Queen in the 3200 block of Southwest Military Drive got an 82. Uncovered food was found next to a bottle of bleach. There was a black residue on the inside of the ice machine. A fan in a walk-in cooler was draining into a bucket with a pool of water on the floor. The cold hold unit was soiled with food and debris and more trash and debris was found behind and below equipment. 
They were told to remove the grease buildup on the griddle. A reinspection was set for this month. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Switching gears, for the fifth night in a row, cities across France are bracing for more violent protests. The outrage sparked from the deadly shooting of a 17-year-old during a traffic stop on Tuesday. Hundreds gathered outside the private funeral of Niall Merzouk in a Paris suburb this morning. Prosecutors say the teen was shot after he failed to stop his vehicle when told to do so by police. 45,000 police have been deployed across the nation tonight to monitor those riots. French President Emmanuel Macron even scrapping a trip to Germany to stay in the country during this civil unrest. And back in the U.S., the National Archives has completed its review of classified documents connected to the assassination of John F. Kennedy. The archives say 99% of the documents are now available to the public, meeting a June 30th deadline set by President Biden. This coming more than 30 years after Congress passed the JFK Assassination Records Collection Act, which ordered all records be public by October 2017. Several postponements were allowed by the Trump and Biden administrations. The National Archives has posted the documents for the public to see on their website, archives.gov. Twitter down was trending today after thousands of users got messages saying rate limit exceeded. What many thought was an outage is actually a temporary policy change. CEO Elon Musk posted that due to, quote, extreme levels of data scraping and system manipulation, the platform was imposing content consumption limits. For now, verified accounts are limited to reading 8,000 tweets a day, while regular accounts can read 800 tweets a day. There's no timetable for the, when this temporary policy might be lifted. A source familiar with CNN says former President Donald Trump tried to pressure the Arizona governor to overturn the state's 2020 presidential election results. That same source says Trump also repeatedly asked Vice President Mike Pence to put pressure on Governor Doug Ducey. At the time, Ducey said publicly he had spoken to President Trump but did not say what they talked about. But those same CNN sources say the governor was being pressured to find fraud that would overturn Arizona's results. Tonight, a new effort to crack down on a crime happening all over San Antonio, illegal dumping. City crews picked up nearly 2,400 tons of illegally dumped trash and waste last year. As the night team's John Paul Barajas explains, the city is taking a new tactic to catch those responsible. For some, it's a quick fix to get rid of unwanted belongings. But for the Copper Branch neighborhood, illegal dumping is becoming a common problem. It's like a whole sectional couch, and it was like uh, chest of drawers, four bedroom sets. I mean, you know, like mattresses, uh, chase lounger. <laughs> it was like a basketball court, a uh, hoop. Uh, let me see what else. Barbecue pit. Neighbors we spoke to say it's more than an eyesore and a safety hazard. They believe it's disrespectful. The most frustrating things, it's, you know, purchasing a home. You're so excited, like you said, and I mean, to have people dumping trash behind your house. Illegal dumping is an ongoing issue around San Antonio, and now Solid Waste Management and San Antonio Police are teaming up to catch those responsible. Extremely excited because this is exactly what we wanted. We needed to catch someone. We needed to publicize that we did, that we are doing this. We needed to reconfirm with everyone there are consequences. Marcus Lee with San Antonio Solid Waste Management explains the intersection of Quintana and Plumnier on the southwest side was identified as a problem spot. Last month, undercover officers arrested three people accused of using this red pickup to illegally dump wood fencing. We're going to continue to do this, so um, there, will, there will be more. Over on the northeast side, neighbors in Copper Branch say repeated calls to 311 have cleared the issue at least for now. We'll probably get another dump, I say in the next two weeks. I guarantee it. Still ahead on the night beat, a near fatal flaw. Disaster avoided after a bystander captures some scary video of a roller coaster support system. You see it there at the top as it goes by. We'll take a closer look at that damage when we come back.